We've been learning a lot about U substitution lately, and if you're like me, you love U substitution. It makes our job so much easier. And what I want to tell you is that U substitution is inside of this bigger thing called a change of variables. And changing of variables, you're going to see probably towards the end of this course here when you're talking about polar coordinates. Uh, changing of variables, whether it be U substitution or changing to polar coordinates or higher level math class calculus classes, where you're talking about spherical and, and pol spherical and cylindrical coordinates, uh, all of these changes of variables helps make our job easier in either evaluating or setting up definite integrals. So it's really here to help us. And this problem here is going to maybe take us one step beyond what you've normally seen with U substitution and we're going to talk about it. So we have this we have this definite integral defined as capital F of X, and then down here we have another integral that is in terms of U, and, and it looks different from this, this integral in pink here. What we want to do is somehow make a change of variables that will allow us to express this integral in green here in terms of capital F of X. So using what you know about U substitution, why don't you pause the video and, and try to make a change of variables in order to make this happen? All right, assuming that you've given it a go. Again, we're trying to make a change of variables here to make these integrands match so that we could express this in terms of capital F of X. So how do we do that? Well, I, I think a good way to start is just to see, okay, what, what change of variables could we make that would make these match? We see that we could try, what could we try here? We could try, uh, we see a u to the one third power and we see a t cubed, so why don't we try that? Why don't we let u to the one third power be equal to t cubed? Be equal to t cubed. What would happen under that change of variables? Well, similar to what you've learned with u substitution so far, you're going to differentiate both sides. So you have one third times u to the negative two thirds power times du, and this is equal to Differentiate our right hand side with 3t squared, 3t squared, let's make that neat, <laughs> 3t squared times dt. So this is what you would have. And, you know, this does not look too appealing, especially, uh, I mean, if we were trying to get some new limits of integration on here, our, our substitution, our change of variables wouldn't be too lovely, it looks like. So maybe we put a pin in this. It was a good try. Maybe we can come back to it if need be. But let's just look. Okay, what else could we try to make a change of variables with that might be a little, a little nicer than this one here? What else could we try? Well, rather than looking at this u to the one third power, let's look at the let's look at the exponent on our sine function here. We have a u and we have a t cubed. So what if we were to try that? What if we were to now try letting letting u be equal to t cubed? What if we were to try that out? t cubed. So again, differentiating both sides, we have du now is equal to 3t squared dt. Okay, so this is looking more appealing and what we've already been used to dealing with. So let's try this out. And, and in order to do that, again, we need some new limits of integration. So we need some new limits, new limbs. And uh, we're going to have our, our limits right here are from, are from 8 we have our upper limit is eight and our lower limit is one and they're in terms of u, but now we need them in terms of t. So in terms of t, I want that in pink. In terms of t, our new upper limit's going to be two and our new lower limit is going to be one still. So now we can rewrite this definite integral under our change of variables. And now we're going to have from one to two of, and wherever we see a u, we're going to replace with a t cubed. So we have t cubed now to the one third power. And then we have sine of sine of t cubed to the one third power, one third power. And this sine function is raised to the u power, which is now going to be raised to the t cubed power. And then uh, finally, we have this du, this differential here, and that now becomes 3t squared, 3t squared dt. So this is our definite integral under our change of variables. And now we're going to see, okay, does, does this change of variables allow us to express in, in terms of capital F of X when we evaluate it? So let's see that. 
Uh, simplifying this, t cubed to the one third power, that's just going to be t. And then we have a three t squared left over. So let's just start simplifying this integrand here. So we're going to have three t cubed. And then our sine function, the the what we're evaluating on the inside here, we have t cubed to the one third power. That's again just t. So we have sine of t to the t cubed power, and then dt. So what you can see here, again, we can take looking at these, we can just take this three out of this integral here. It's a constant, and we have the same integrands. So finally, all we need to do is use some fundamental theorem of calculus, and leverage this definition of capital F of X and we'll get the following. We have three. In fact, we took that out of our integral three and then using some fundamental theorem of calculus F of two minus F of one. And those are both capital F. So this is our answer here. And what you can see, we made a change of variables and allowed uh, and that allowed ourselves to find similar integrands. And we were able to express this definite integral, which was originally in terms of u, we were able to express that in terms of capital F of x.